Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sure we'll have a few more people join us, but today it is my distinct pleasure to introduce my good friend and colleague, Esther Desmet. I could talk to you about Esther all day, but I'm going to be quick because I want to get to her presentation. Esther is a senior research policy advisor at Ghent University, holding both a master's in classical studies and advanced master's in media and communication. In 2014, she spearheaded the new institutional policy on societal value creation at Ghent, and she leads workshops on communication strategy, impact, digital presence, and social media. Many of you will recognize Esther as a serial presenter at the annual ARIS Summit and contributor to the ARIS community. Her presentations are always thought-provoking and engaging, and I got a preview of her second slide, so I know that she is not going to disappoint us. And I will just say this, if you ever get a chance to tour the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. with Esther, take her up on it. That's all I'm going to say. We can, ask, we can ask about that escapade later. Now I will turn it over to Esther. Thank you, Susan, for that kind introduction. And thank you, Aris community, for inviting me, of course. Um, I would be happier to just come over to America and do this in person. But hey, something came up that has us all homebound, of course. Um, I'm also very happy to see some of my other friends and colleagues. Um, a big shout out and wave to you all. I miss you all terribly. Um, let's start, I think. Um, I was asked to talk about finding the best support structure or a good support structure for societal impact. And I'll be presenting the case of Ghent University, a very small town in Belgium. Belgium is in Europe. It's not the capital of Brussels, but it's near Brussels. Um, and it, it'll be my story about how we um, set up our policy and our support structures at Ghent and um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, of course. Um, I'm trying to get this to work. <sighs> there we are. Yes, um, I've been working in the impact industry, which is an ugly word, the impact environment since 2013. And um, Along those years, everyone started to talk about impact more and more. And um, I really found this an excellent quote um, because it actually captures how a lot of us think about it and um, how our researchers are being, well, being trained to think about impact as well. Uh, it is still a little bit of a myth for some people. For other people, it's something that they're really scared of. And then for other people, it's like something they do every day. So yeah, maybe in that respect, impact in academia is like sex as well. Um, Esther, before you go any further, I want you to know that you're in slide view. So yes, I know. So I know. As long as you know that, we're good. Uh, I know that because I'm I'm scared I'll lose the rest of the view <laughs> if I try to do something else, Fair because enough. I had this weird Zoom update just a minute ago. Um, so if you don't mind, it'll be like this. There's no notes, so nothing to distract you. Um, so when we started at Ghent University with the whole idea of we want to have a strategy on impact. Um, this excellent uh, workbook wasn't available yet. Uh, and I'm, of course, talking about, um, hi, David, about one of uh, your excellent guidebooks on um, how to think about the institutional context of um, setting up an impact strategy and support uh, within your university. And um, but of course, these are the things that I, I, I would recommend if, if you have to start out from scratch is, is thinking about some of these elements uh, before you start rolling out and, and incentivizing um, actual um, support for impact at your university. So it's, it's very important that if we talk about these things, if we um, uh, exchange ideas about impact. We're always bound by our own institutional context, by our national context. Um, although the the thing that is impact is the same thing everywhere, um, but it does influence how you talk to your researchers about impact and how you support them, and and how you kind of counteract their arguments as well. Um, so it is important that 
before you start out rolling out uh, any kind of support services that you actually take into account what do you already have available um, are you starting from scratch or are there networks that you have already set up um, are there already services um, within research support or outreach offices uh, that you can actually tap into and and kind of bring together um, because i think one of the main things that we've encountered at Ghent University is that there was already quite a lot being done around impact generation, but maybe not with that kind of label on it. And these people weren't always aware of each other. Um, and so what we attempted to do is by setting up a, an institutional strategy is by trying to get these people to talk to each other and see, have them see themselves as part of a bigger picture and, and actually working together towards a, a single goal. Um, has that worked? Um, I'll talk about this later on, but um, yes and no. Um, it, it is a big, it, it's actually a very big challenge to get everyone on board on just one single strategy and, and have them working together because often your university doesn't have just one single strategy and although for us impact is an important strategy it has to compete with loads of other things that um, come our way and that we have to to tackle as a university um, another thing that before you actually start rolling things out is is thinking about um, not just the context uh, in which you're doing this, what is your leadership thinking about this issue? Um, what kind of um, actual support are you getting for, for this kind of strategy? It's also thinking about how does our research community itself think about impact? How impact literate are they? Are they um, what, what will they be needing? What kind of skills are already there? Um, how do we talk about the assessment of impact? Is this something that we already talk about? And, and what are we actually going to be incentivizing? Are we going to be incentivizing the success stories, the big impact stories? Or are we really going to focus on, for instance, and this is an, a shout out to, to Leonie, who's also on the call, to productive interactions, to actually the relationships that we're building with uh, our stakeholders. So this idea of impact literacy has been important to Ghent University to actually get everyone on board and, and almost on the same level um, if, we, if we do workshops is, is trying to get everyone on the same level and the same understanding, uh, but also understand what is still needed to be done. Um, another element in this is not just building up the skills and the understanding of the community you're working within, um, but also knowing your place as a research administration. Um, this is a personal statement because I'm um, tasked with impact policy while being part of the research office. Um, it all depends on the structure your university has, of course. But in our case, there, there's... there's as a research administration, as research support managers, we try to know our place also in this story of impact. And, and so on the one hand, we have this kind of triple role. We need to make life of our academics easier and not by providing them with more red tape and more hurdles to jump over, um, but also with the impact literacy idea, uh, enabling them to better engage and, and to find the pathways that they actually need, while at the same time leaving them in charge of their own impact pathways and not taking over, not setting up the, the relationships with stakeholders ourselves and, and then just saying, these are the stakeholders you need to work with. It's, it's very important that they take ownership of their own impact uh, creation. And then of course, doing things that helps them deliver the activities itself, um, making sure that there's platforms for outreach that they can, can just piggyback onto, or just um, make sure that uh, if they want to organize something that we're there as well to, to help them uh, lend a hand. So this is kind of the, the background to how I would set up if I would start again uh, is by, by doing this kind of short analysis on what's, 
what's kind of the, the the baseline that we're working with before you start rolling out all kinds of things and then finding out that it, it just doesn't fit with the context that you're trying to roll out your policy. Very quick word of our sponsor. Um, yes, I'm from Ghent University. This is how the city looks like. Uh, this is our uh, famous book tower, our library. Uh, and we're not a campus, campus university. Uh, we're a very decentralized university. We're spread all over the city of Ghent, which is really nice because we've, we've got loads of um, characteristic and individual buildings. But at the same time, it's been a huge challenge not having a very centralized approach to our university and its policy. Um, so in, in essence, we have 11 schools, 11 faculties, and they're all like little kingdoms, even with their own uh, location within the city. So trying to get these people all working in, in kind of the same way um, has, has been really difficult. At the same time, it allows for some opportunities as well, because all of them have their own characteristics and all research has their own characteristics. So it's, it's, it's nice to have just one I have more than just one story when you go about spreading the word uh, around impact policy. Um, about 70, uh, no, 47,000 students. So we're, we're quite a big university in that respect and we're very much research intensive university, but with a comprehensive training uh, offer as well. So we've got all kinds of uh, areas of study. Um, we've got a, a global campus as well in South Korea. And one of our main mottos is dare to think. Um, so, and, and again, this is a, a, a benefit and a challenge at the same time. That means that a lot of, um, kind of uh, autonomous thought is being uh, supported. But at the same time, if you try to push through some kind of centralized and, and strategic idea, um, that, that's, that's not that easy. I'm going to focus on the institutional policy on societal impact. Um, and I distinguish kind of three levels on which I've been working and, and in which I've been trying to set up separate actions. Of course, these things are all connected to each other. Um, so I'll be focusing uh, a little bit on uh, what have we done on policy level, um, uh, because trying to get an impact strategy working is it turning a lot of little knobs in different areas, in, in, in different policy areas as well. Um, it's, it's working together with people from HR, it's working together with the people from communication services and so on. Uh, but of course, the main thing is the assessment um, system that you provide within your university. Um, then the most important one uh, and one with, that we've really um, invested in is people. I'll get back to that as well. And then the third one, platforms. Uh, it will all make sense once I get through them. So the policy uh, one, um, as uh, Susan mentioned in her introduction, we started um, writing our policy plan on, on societal impact 2013-2014, um, and we got it approved by 2015. Um, why did it take that long? Because, uh, yeah, on the one hand, I had to, it was a new area for me. I had to really read up on everything that was available at that time, uh, which luckily wasn't as much as there's available now. Um, and uh, getting to know people in the same area, um, talking to people like Susan, for instance, on, on how uh, broader impacts was, was being rolled out across uh, the US, going to, to conferences and so on, being part of the impact tribe, um, the international impact tribe. Um, to be honest, that policy plan was more of a brainstorming document because from the get-go, uh, it was made very clear to me that at the end of having this approval, I wouldn't get any extra funding and I wouldn't get extra staff. So I had to be really pragmatic on where are we going to turn the knobs and um, luck has it that I'm part of the research department, which is a very um, strong department within uh, the university. So I, I did know I, there were might be some things we would be able to do without having the, the approval of anyone else. 
But if you really wanted to make a difference um, and if you really wanted to support researchers, I, I was in a bit of a bind because I knew I was going to have to communicate about, hey, people, impact is important. You need to think about this and we will try and help you. But it's only me that's there to help you. Uh, and so that was kind of a, a false start to, to begin with, um, which meant that especially in the first two years, my job was kind of cherry picking from the institutional policy plan, things that we had put on the agenda and said, these are some of the things we might be able to do if we really want to have a impact driven university. Um, and, and just wait for opportunities to, to pick another one from that long list of things we wanted to change. Now, one of the benefits was that um, that means that this policy plan wasn't some kind of static thing. It meant that even now I'm able to do some things that weren't even part of the policy plan um, because now there's some kind of trust that even the brainstorming document that we call our policy plan was a good enough framework uh, to start things, to get things rolling. Um, one of the first things I, I tried to do was get this kind of um, yeah, head start on the impact literacy thing, which was trying to get a common understanding within our university. What are we talking about when we talk about impact? Um, in our case, we um, have this term, which is valorization or value creation, which is essentially the pathway to impact. So the process of getting to impact. And it was, it was really crucial getting across to our researchers that um, our main focus would be the process and not the results. And um, we were able to say this because we don't have anything like REF, like a big nas nationwide um, assessment system that only cared about the results, about the success stories. And so that means that we can actually focus on the processes underlying impact creation. We also try to get across the many various pathways that are available to impact um, because a lot of our researchers were very much stuck in this one idea that one, um, impact creation happens at the end of a project or of research. It isn't part of the entire way, the methods, the, the approach to research. So that was something we had to get rid of. Uh, and they thought it was, it's, it's science communication. That's what is impact. Um, and so these big myths we had to debunk and show them by having a website full of examples and full of kind of a, a list of possible pathways um, that there is something for everyone, for every kind of individual researcher, for every type of research and for every kind of stakeholder and that it's important that you find the right fit and that you're not doing something like uh, i don't know participatory research when it doesn't fit your stakeholders or it doesn't fit your research topic or the in the the the, the uh, kind of impact you want to generate um, our policy on societal impact was in a big way tied to a previous policy that we had on uh, incentivizing social sciences and humanities research. But we did make it clear that societal impact is not something for SSH and economic impact is something for STEM. So we really wanted to have this holistic approach and tell everyone what kind of research you're doing, whether it's humanities or whether it's uh, medicine, societal impact is something that we can all care about. Um, but there was, we have learned quite a, a, a big lesson from having first a strategy for, uh, for social sciences and humanities to then better communicate about what is societal impact and the strategy around this. Another big red thread throughout our policy was a focus on interdisciplinarity and even transdisciplinarity. So not just having academic communities working together across topics, but also working together with stakeholders uh, in research as well. Uh, and so being open to non-academic knowledge, non-academic expertise. 
Um, and so these two kind of policy threads really worked together very well uh, and made in some cases made the case for societal impact which was for some researchers a little bit too soft for their liking but if we talked to them about interdisciplinarity they saw a benefit to then actually working towards impact as well and the same thing happened for open science if i give workshops to a researchers um, Depending on what kind of group it is, I will sometimes start out with talking to them about open science rather than immediately jump into the society and stakeholders and impact story. Um, I'll start about how is, isn't science something that should build upon and uh, should be built upon and, and, and should be shared and, and should be available to, to many people. And then I take them just one step further why not share this and and take into account the voice of society if you're doing research as well and and for some people just talking about sharing their data is is, is a big step already um talking about citizen science for instance um will be easier if you've talked about sharing data and and, and things like that as well um now that's the policy area that's kind of the how do we communicate about the policy as well and and how do we pull together different strands that we already had in our um, research policy uh, the next big step was of course um, showing uh, walking the talk which was essentially the biggest critique we often got when we talked about when we talked with researchers in in preparation of our policy they said of course everyone cares about impact but we are not being rewarded for it we're not being rewarded for these societal value creation activities that we do um, so we knew that uh, the the success of this policy was really tied into how do we approach our reward system, our incentives and our career progression models and so on. And this is something which isn't, of course, entirely my responsibility. It's something that you have to work with um, people from the education office as well, uh, people from HR. Um, but I, I think that we we actually uh, had a big success on on, on that level as well um, so one of the first things we did was actually look at how do we use um, indicators how are we trying to get rid of a quantitative approach to assessment and so um, in the long run we signed the dora declaration so the the san francisco declaration on research assessment and um, because we're at the same time we're not just a um, university trying to evaluate individual researchers and research groups and the research happening in these groups but we're also a funder we have our own research fund so we have this kind of double um, profile and so that meant that we can um, if we implement the principles of dora that we have to take into account that we we do this both in funding and in our evaluation system um, and so um, in 2000 18 a new career model for professors was introduced and impact was part of this career model uh, and impact both in teaching and in research it wasn't this third pillar anymore it wasn't this separate thing it was integrated in the research dimensions so part of how you could um show yourself as a successful professor was that you could indicate look i i have a strategy on societal impact and it's part of how i do research it's what i think is important um, and that made a big difference um, we we saw people that were kind of on the brink of being a lot more active in in for instance outreach and public engagement now felt kind of strengthened because their career model allows it now just one little note about this this is a relatively new career model and the proof of the pudding is in the eating i think we still have to see what the impact of this career model will be will professors actually um use proof of their impact more 
in getting uh, promoted? Um, we don't know yet. Um, this is a, something we would like to actually research and, and have people track whether uh, what's happening on, on the floor, as it were. An important element besides having impact as an integrated element into the research dimension and not as a separate thing is that we now look at what's the group level rather than the individual which is important for impact because impact is a group effort in most cases uh, and so it's 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 important to actually show professors that they're part of a bigger thing and that they can actually um, choose for in their career model what they will be focusing on if they will be focusing on public engagement the next five years this might have an impact on the bigger group and someone else might have to pull their weight when it comes to the real uh, quantitative output of research and so we wanted this to be a group discussion uh, we wanted research groups to sit together and have an impact strategy for the entire group and not just wait for just this one super impact professor to have all the impact and of course another element in in the approaching assessment differently is stepping away from the bean counting and from the checklists and bringing in elements such as um, having narratives, impact case studies uh, that you can put forward in your evaluation um, and focusing on the process of um, getting to impact rather than these are my results and only looking at the results and so putting the research that you're doing into context and and actually assessing rather the context than just the results in itself so that was an important step uh, but again um, it, it's 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 just a step i think we need to push this further and see what it actually does to how people see their career how people feel that they're being rewarded and incentivized uh, so it's just at the beginning of of a long process i guess um at the start of the the policy plan i told you there wasn't any kind of funding so i didn't have any kind of money to to put new things into place but i'm happy to say that in march we're launching of um, our societal value creation fund and that we actually have a, a small fund it's about a hundred thousand um, uh, euros I, I don't know what that is in dollars i think a hundred and fifty thousand dollars something like that uh, annually to put towards um, societal value creation so if people have interesting projects uh, that have the potential to to do something with public engagement of that might have a bigger impact but if only they had this little bit more money left at the end of their project this is what we're trying to fund and again it's the first step um, one of the things that I'm, I'm i am really proud about is that i've been able to convince my leadership to put people in the assessment panel for the the allocation panel for this kind of funding from society itself so it isn't just academics thinking about um, these colleagues of mine need more money and this is good impact and this is bad impact no we actually have rep representatives from society um, deciding um, what are good projects and what aren't um, and of course besides having our own separate little pot of funding is that we're trying to build up more expertise in um, advising and supporting our researchers with other kind of funding sources uh, although i have to mention that within flanders there's not a lot of opportunities for for societal impact as being part of the funding but of course the european uh, framework program um, one of the main uh, deciders one of the main criteria is of course impact so it is important that we get to grips with what are they expecting on on that level as well and of course our researchers work within an international context so if they should collaborate with some someone from america with nsf funding they should be able to understand the broader impacts criterion as well uh, and then again just tie in with the fact that you have to walk the talk you have to train people to to get these new kind of skills or 
understand what the impact pathways are about. Um, you have to train them about planning ahead. Um, it's, I, I know that a lot of you know that impact is something that happens serendipitously, but at the same time, it's something you could plan for. And, and so this is something we try to, to teach our researchers and, and have them be able to articulate what the impact is. And, and that takes time. Uh, even for us, it's a learning curve. Um, understanding funding requirements uh, and we're trying to do this and this will get me to my next level namely through people through knowledge brokers people that are really close to researchers to big research groups so that you can um, you're not just depending upon your own central services uh, which, which is a good thing because for impact, you often really need someone who understands what the research is about and what the stakeholders are about. And we can, of course, help with putting this into a nice paragraph and, and checking all the boxes of the funder. But you actually need people that are on the front line um, bridging the gap between society and, and research. So that brings me to level two people so besides having a policy and having some money and having a good assessment system it's actually investing in people uh, training people and and having them uh, train researchers as well um, so of course you have someone like me but I'm, I'm i'm no longer that much in the trenches as i would say um, I'm, I'm just trying to follow up on on the bigger the bigger picture um, I had all my colleagues in the tech transfer office. They were already there. It was really, it was already a very mature kind of office uh, because economic impact had been a strategy for the past 10 years because that was a strategy of Flanders uh, because we wanted to be a knowledge economy and innovation and products and you, you, you know the drill. Um, but they had hardly any expertise in SSH support and they had hardly any expertise in pathways to impact uh, for society um, so not the tech transfer kind of process which is sometimes very linear um, and it, it meant it I've, I've invested quite a lot of time of talking to them and and trying to get them on board and and have them as accomplices partners in crime for the bigger story of impact and it's it's slowly working um it's it's working then all my colleagues in the funding units we have quite a lot of funding streams that we follow up on and of course impact was already a big part of development corporation funding um, it's capacity building it's uh, working together with the global south and and actually making a difference for people over there uh, and learning from that kind of relationship our eu funding um, has already been um, increased with i think about 15 extra staff members to to follow up on all this they're not all working on impact of course um, but they've all been they're, they're all on message now um, uh, about the importance of impact but also in flemish and federal funding uh, although they're very much focused on science communication and on the results and dissemination uh, rather than the big impact ideas and pathways um, i try to to just get all my colleagues on board and and tell them that there's a lot of resources that i've made available and that they can guide researchers to find these resources as well so that means that in a um <laughs> click to make a title um, that in a uh, structure of a research department there's a lot of um, units that have something to do with impact so you've got me sitting on the impact policy you've got people in the technology transfer office even the people from the university library which has been opening up towards other types of scholarly communication and and for instance sharing data sets uh, but also having popularized um, communication and things like that they're all part of the bigger picture and of course the eu team as well so that's that's purely in a structural kind of way so that's on the central level that's where i sit but um we we found some money 
uh, my my boss is very good at finding money in his drawers somewhere, and um, and I mean his desk drawers. Um, I'm sorry, I'm I'm just being stupid now, um, but. Um, what we actually did was um, based on a, a lot of the the research that's out there um, invested in impact knowledge brokers people on the front line providing this kind of link between uh, research topics and stakeholders and so we've created 10 of these positions uh, these are postdoc positions uh, of a uh, open ended with an open ended contract so we're hitting three things at the same time we're creating interdisciplinary research consortia around a certain theme a grand challenge as it were we're providing them with a knowledge broker to get to societal impact. And that knowledge broker is a postdoc, which is kind of this typical mid-level researcher that otherwise doesn't really have a great career ahead of them. In most cases in Flanders, we have very short-term um, postdoc positions and they uh, either end up somewhere on a two-year project um, but actually these people we don't want to to get rid of all their knowledge and all their expertise we want to offer them a, a worthwhile career as well um, so that was immediately an answer to a question that was at Flemish University is a very burning question what with all what are we going to do with all the postdocs that will not end up in a professorship um, and and these are actually people they're not doing um active research but they have a research background um, and they are in charge of the impact pathways for this entire group for this entire topic they're the ones uh dealing with the stakeholders trying to connect all the dots and um we have these people for societal impact and they are very complementary to uh, a kind of a um uh, um a similar network that we have for economic impact funded through the industrial research fund as well so business developers and and in some cases we now see them working together where they have just one opportunity and they provide both the technology transfer element of it so they create a product but at the same time there's an a coordinator an idc coordinator involved making sure that there's a bigger societal impact as well um, these consortia were um, kind of selected on the basis of their impact plan, uh, how well they could articulate what they were going to do, what their strategy was, and what the added value of such a knowledge broker would be. And we had them evaluated with, again, a panel with representatives from society. And then the next step will be in three years time, they will be evaluated as a consortium, uh, again, based on their future impact strategy, but also on impact case studies of the things that they might have achieved or how they are working towards impact, focusing again on the, um, the process. Um, the knowledge brokers themselves also have uh, their own um, career model and also their own evaluations, um, which is of course focused on how well they work as a knowledge broker. And these people have become my colleagues. These people have become my decentralized colleagues, my, my antenna. And um, what I've done is we, we kind of formed this network. We teach each other. Um, I've taught them about the more conceptual framework of impact. And what they're very good at is they become experts in certain pathways to impact. So for instance, we have this consortium around um, criminal policy and crime, and they actually are very good at translating their research into policy advice and working together with policymakers. And what they then do is teach the other nine knowledge brokers about that kind of skill and, and how to do this. Um, and it's, it's a very nice group of people to work with because they're very open-minded, they're very driven. We ha even have to kind of um, 
you know, well, guard themselves for themselves. Um, they, they can be so enthusiastic that they uh, would say yes to everything. Um, but it has really been a joy working with these people. And um, let me just show you. So 10 areas in which, that, uh, in which we've identified these groups. Um, you might see um, a lot of social sciences and humanities in there. And that was because they were able to best articulate their impact strategy. They knew what they wanted to do and how society could benefit from their research. And actually some of our STEM consortia were really bad at this. So we, we still have a lot of work to do um, in, in some areas, but these consortia are not just SSH consortia. They are very interdisciplinary. Uh, some of them are really transdisciplinary as well. And uh, so we've got some of them in, in psychology, in medieval history, in, in um, labor market studies, uh, global studies, aging, young, um, migration, and, and things like that. So um, it's, it's been a real joy uh, discovering what they all could do. Final level. Uh, so. I think a lot of my energy has went into in, in my first setup has went into just policy and it's not that it's completely stalled on the policy level, but now I'm really much I'm, I'm investing most of my time into working together with the, the people with the coordinators with the knowledge brokers, but at the same time we're trying to to benefit from certain platforms that we've set up already or developing new platforms and um, you'll see that i've have a mixed definition of platforms. So on the one hand, it's important that we, as a university, we are embedded within the city of Ghent. And so this is a local stakeholder that we really want to, to work together with really closely. Um, and, and so one of the things that we try to teach our researchers as well is that there's many ways of having an impact. We're not all going for these big impact things, internationally um, important things, but also little small scale local um, regions of impact. Um, also having a big link with um, education, like community service learning, one of the, the main pathways to impact is, of course, training and education. So there shouldn't be this big divide between research and education. So we try to have this kind of natural flowing um, diffusion of, of, of information for these kind of things. And also we keep, we have a big tradition at Ghent University in, in development cooperation projects. Uh, and we see that as working towards societal impact as well. Then we invest in some bigger uh, university-wide public engagement and outreach platforms uh, so that not every research group has this idea that they have to start from scratch. And even individual researchers sometimes feel like, I have to, I have to do everything myself. I have to start from zero. No, we do have things that we invest in um, strategically. Uh, so for instance, we have a science communication unit that sets up quite a lot of events during the year. Uh, we work closely together with a big driver within our university, which is our, our sustainability unit. Um, think about the SDGs, for instance, that I've not talked about in this because it's not the main part of our impact policy, but we try to link up with them when it's strategically interesting. Um, and then we've uh, invested uh, quite a lot of effort into setting up this big living lab in our city, which is the city library. So we are part of the city library with certain research groups because the city library receives 5,000 people every day. So that is direct contact with your citizens, with your stakeholders. Uh, and so we have a, a close collaboration with our city library as well. And we've just opened up recently, although it's been not that successful because of the COVID measures, but we've got our own university museum uh, opened up in October of last year, uh, which is kind of a place, it's, it's not your usual science museum. It's a place where um, people are really triggered into thinking and thinking about what's, what's the place of science in 
modern day times. Um, it's, it's not just celebrating the successes, it's, it's about what's the place of doubt in research as well. And so we really want to show them um, what the impact of research can be uh, for, for everyday life. Um, I'm one of the guides in that museum and I have a whole um, tour that deals with impact of research. So that's a good way to keep in touch with the, the stakeholder, with the citizen as well. Um, we try to be part of, of uh, international and national networks that deal with impact and, and be part of big projects. Um, actually researching impact and knowing about what, what pro how do these processes work, what can we learn from each other and, and then help in this impact literacy um, thing that we're doing at the university. And one of the other things that we really noticed that was important is changing how we talk about um, ourselves uh, in our strategic communication. So we try to focus on our researchers as human beings, human beings that want to make a difference in the world. And we want to focus on the possible impact and not just on, yes, we got 50 new ERC grantees or yes, we've got a uh, hundred new projects. We talk about the story behind the success or the failure. Uh, and, and that has been something that, that really changed how our researchers feel that we're walking the talk. Um, we used to communicate mostly about how well we're doing in certain rankings, but that isn't the story of research that society is, is bothered about. And then just to round off, um, you have to think about certain other infrastructures as well. Uh, and that is um, having a good research information system that actually uh, provides our researchers with a system in which they can register and upload and manage all these activities that they're doing, all these case studies, um, show their expertise and their collaborations. And so we try to make that a bit more visible so that people really feel rewarded for the things that they're doing as well. Try to reuse all this information so that they don't need to um, upload all this information 50 times uh, in different systems. And we've also invested in getting uh, alt metric uh, available for our researchers, not as an assessment tool, but rather as opening their eyes to certain possibilities. Um, it helps them track the attention to their work uh, on online platforms, but it also shows them what kind of policymakers are using and citing their research, um, who's interested, who's talking about their research. And, and so that might open up certain um, avenues for collaboration as well. Um, so it's only part of the bigger picture um, and, and not a, a, well, a, a goal in itself uh, to measure impact. Um, to conclude, uh, it's been a, an interesting few years so far. Um, I've, I've learned quite a lot. Uh, I've also learned a lot about what I don't know. And um, there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, it's, it's, it's great to co-create policy. I think that's a big lesson that I've learned. Um, we all talk about co-creation in research, but in policy, it's important as well. We've talked to I've talked to numerous researchers about this topic. I also try to evaluate our own policy based on having conversations with a lot of stakeholders and a lot of um, um, researchers themselves, really get out of my office and not be part of this kind of uh, mythological ivory tower, um, but also co-create infrastructure. You cannot just sit back and expect your central services to do everything. It is something that is a shared responsibility. And especially in having relationships with stakeholders, stakeholders need to trust the person that they're working with. And sometimes we as a central administration would just hamper that relationship. Um, but also it's something that I get frustrated about sometimes, these researchers that keep whining about how things are so difficult and that the academic system is never changing, well, get off your ass and do something about this. Uh, organize yourselves, talk to your own 
policymakers and 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 join up with people like us because we also want to change the system but we need help from the people in the system as well um, and so for instance with that network of knowledge brokers that is sharing infrastructure as well i cannot expect all of them to be experts in all pathways of impact um, so it is important to to actually share the burden so it's a group effort. Um, impact is a group effort. And we've been evaluating too long on the individual level. And, and actually, um, it's, it's difficult to, in your communication, for instance, we, we like to put a spotlight on individual researchers, on these superstars. But we've really found it useful putting a spotlight on groups and showing what they can do as a group which is not easy because it's a very competitive system if uh, the funding is also is, is only stretching so far but it i do feel that impact benefits from having a community within your academic uh, environment um lessons so far this isn't a surprise it's it's all about a long-term relationship of trust with stakeholders and if we're only investing in these short so short term projects and, and short term impact success stories, that's not what we want. We don't want our stakeholders to feel used. We want them to feel part of the fabric of research and of a university because we, in essence, are just serving society. And maybe to finish off, um, I found it really interesting so far i still do find it interesting but it's not straightforward um, i'm often very frustrated about the speed of things um, i'm often very frustrated about not getting through to certain people or leadership not taking this seriously um, but well uh, i think we're all uh, these even in, in valid, uh, um, we're trying to be these these um, little crusaders um, and so it's it's really great to be part of a bigger network where i know i have some fellow crusaders uh, to fight the fight voila i think that's it from me um, i know i didn't put any weird uh, slides except for that first one in there so i hope you found it engaging enough that you were inspired enough but if you have any questions i'm happy to take them in the final five minutes and otherwise you can always find me on twitter uh, i'll be happy to answer your questions there esther I posted a question in the chat that probably got buried in all of our great comments going back and forth during your, your enlightening talk. What kind of training do you give the postdocs slash knowledge brokers to get them aware of community needs, et cetera, and the interface between the University of Ghent and, and the community? Um, well, they get this kind of starter um, workshop from me. Um, just with all, um, I, I give them an introduction in what is it that we actually want as a university, who are our main partners, um, what have been our, our experiences in, in that respect. I try to teach them about all the literature that's out there, all the experiences that we've, we've built up together, essentially. Um, uh, but they actually train each other. Uh, they, they, they try to sometimes even do kind of these job shadowing things. Um, what I didn't mention is that these 10 knowledge brokers, we started out with four of them. So we have these kind of more, um, uh, they, they, they've already been there for five years. So they're now training up the six new ones uh, and, and showing them the ropes. Uh, but at the same time, the six new ones are in totally different topics and they are kind of teaching the old guard as well by saying, ah, is that how you've been doing it? Uh, um, what we also try to do is hire postdocs that aren't just straight from PhD to postdoc born in this academic system. We try to get people that have outside experience and that actually can show us that they have already a network outside academia and that they know what the, 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 the main um, 
cares and needs and aims are of stakeholders and, and essentially society and, and, and end users. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. What we're also trying to do is just have them uh, tap into the, the usual uh, postdoc training that we have available at the university. Things like leadership, things like active learning, things, uh, uh, mentoring programs and so on. Yeah. Um, and there's also, of course, um, knowledge transfer training, uh, mostly by the tech transfer office. So entrepreneurial skills, um, we, we just try to give them everything that they want. Sound great we do a lot of service learning with undergrads and we find the undergrads train each other very well yes because some of them are so experienced even as undergrads with working with community groups and yeah. it, i think the validation is much greater from peer to peer rather than instructor absolutely to undergrad. absolutely Thank i can you. i can only take them so far um yes I didn't read the chats, so if there's any pressing questions, um, you have to put your hand up. Um, Esther, thank you so much for taking your evening to talk with us. This is really amazing, as always. Um, and if there are any other questions, we'll make sure we forward them your way.